Hello, all you bronies and Pegasisters. Welcome to the NBS show. I'm your host, the man, the myth, the hippogriff, Silver Quill. And joining me today is planeswalker extraordinaire, Norman Sanzo. Oh, my freaking god. Oh, my freaking god. It's a flying pig. Well, you've changed the theme of Jurassic Park for me forever. <laughs> yes, indeed. I will pay you back. <laughs> And also, one of our newest members and adorable mascot, Sapphire Heart Song. Hi! I found a pig in my backyard, and it had wings, so I chopped it off and decided to fry them up for chicken wings. And I also decided to use the pig for bacon. And now I'm having him for breakfast. Wow! That's not dark at all. Indeed. And what's this? We have a, a fourth member. A red and black OC. Get my two by four. <laughs> Please welcome Torterra one three two four. I'm just gonna hide in a bush now. <laughs> I don't want to get hit by a two by four. Uh, what about a steel chair? Would that do well? What's this? He's got Norman Sanzo has a steel chair. Oh, it's what is this wrestling now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, bring it on, Essie. <laughs> Are you sure Turn Craig isn't in this podcast? Not yet. <laughs> We shall see. Oh, yeah, two red and black OCs fighting. As Sapphire was saying, it's time to grab a shotgun and fire up the skillet, because we're talking about when pigs fly. Ay, ay, ay. What a quinky dink, too, since we got two mythical p- creatures in here, Hippogriff and a Pokemon. <laughs> You're not today... that mythical. Now get back in my Master Ball. Stop crushing my dreams. <laughs> Your dreams have been crushed long before I got to hold of them. Anywho, today we are reviewing IDW's My Little Pony Friends Forever, number 23, starring Applejack and Fluttershy, as they struggle to protect the mythical Pegasus. This is written by Ted Anderson, with art by Tony Fleeks and colors by Heather Breckel. And so, let us begin with our initial thoughts, in no particular order. So, Torterra. Well, this is the first time I'm reviewing a comic, so I don't really have much to say. Have you read John Comic? No, I have never read an MLP comic before. No, but have you read this one? Oh, this one, yeah, I've read this one. Okay. So do you have a, just a first impression? Like, it's the usual. You, they say that the mythical creature doesn't exist, and they find out it does. Kind of, kind of like an uh, old story. That was my first impression when I read through the book. Yeah. <laughs> All right, continuing with our no particular order, Norman Santo commence. I don't know what to think of it. Like, it has Fluttershy and Applejack hanging out. It was pretty cool. And then suddenly, Ponies comes in and destroying the ecosystem. Ah, oh, it's Princess Mononoke all over again, except with flying pigs. It's going to be interesting to talk about this one. It's, it's all about how Applejack can't tell a lie and whatnot, and it's pretty interesting. And yeah. Sapphire. I find it interesting that we go back to Applejack and Fluttershy, but they're on their own. And I kind of like that when it comes to characterization. It's not like bats where they were sort of... Bound together, but with the main six being a bit of a conflict in this. It's a forgettable comic. That's just all I have to say. It's forgettable. There you go. And finally, Silver Quill, your thoughts? Silver Quill? Oh, what a hack. What a hack. The handsome hippogriff, where are you? Oh, but in all honesty, I hate that it is forgettable because these are my two favorite characters out of the main six. I'd love for them to do more together. But the truth is, all the conflict lay on Applejack for this issue. Fluttershy was present, but not particularly active. And I'm afraid that is often a weakness for her in the comics. She has a hard time. Already a shy pony, the writers seem to struggle with figuring out how to integrate her into static images. And the idea of the Pegasus, in a war, it, it is kind of funny from our perspective, in a world with hydras, Manticores, Cerberus, all manner of mythical creatures. A winged pig is actually pretty meh. Mm-hmm. But you have to remember that in a world of pegasi, unicorns, and also griffins and dragons, having them, well, having them seeing the very unusual flying pig is kind of different. Kind of different. It is. It is. And it's still special ponies. But, you know, as the audience, we're kind of like, well, it's kind of cute next. But anywho, consider yourselves warned, dear viewers. From here on out, we are in spoiler territory. 
But let us start with the cover that inspires Norman's musical tirades. <laughs> cover A features a dress park parody of our two heroines, which I think is pretty clever. Yeah, I didn't know what to think, but I really enjoyed this cover. Okay, um, everybody here is going to hate me, but I have not seen Jurassic Park in my life. Really? What? I've never seen Jurassic Park. I don't know, it never came off as appealing to me, like the concept. I just never really watched Jurassic Park. Okay, okay, it's okay. I have but one reply. Ah. Oh, there he goes. But the variant cover for this issue is also a cute one, too. Let's see here. The variant cover, I don't have that record on hand. I mostly just know the Jurassic Park. The variant cover for this one is, well, Applejack and Fluttershy camping. And Fluttershy overdoing with the marshmallow burning. Ah, yes. Yes. Jinx, you owe me a soda. You owe me an apology, non-Jurassic Park watcher. (laughs) I love you. Sure you do, but just demonstrate that by watching Jurassic Park. (laughs) But just the first one. Skip the other two. Skip the other two. It's just the first one. I'm a motherhood of T-Rex. (laughs) T-Rex. T-Rex. Anywho. So... We're going to tackle this scene by scene because, truthfully, there's not a lot of thematic issues. In fact, there's uh, well, not a lot of events, to be honest. Well, the only thematic thing we can talk about is Applejack's honesty. Exactly, but that's that's instantly a, a downgrade in uh, Friends Forever Con because it's about two characters. But we're, really, if you only have one talking, oh, we're in trouble. But let us commence to begin. Applejack and Fluttershy are on a camping trip together, and that makes a lot of sense. Applejack is such a hardworking pony. Mm -hmm. Uh, The only way for her to relax is to get away from the farm, and Fluttershy is the ultimate naturalist. Of course, she's going to just enjoy getting into the middle, into the heart of a safe forest. This is not ever free. Oh, yes, totally. Basically, they are all set to, to begin the relaxation when suddenly... Multiple ponies, including Bon Bon, just swoop in. The secret agent Bon Bon to you. Me. No, it's special agent Sweetie Jaws. Oh, yes. <laughs> Heavens. <laughs> the head of this pig hunt is known as Nosy News, a reporter for the Cantalot Daily. No association with, with Equestria Daily. <laughs> uh, yes. Now get me more picture of Spider-Man. And I have to say, this unicorn has the glossiest mane you've ever seen in this show. Oh, yeah, th- that is true. Now that you mention it. No, I think we had previous artists who did this style, too. and But that style was kind of a uh, full-page red kind of deal. Remember? For Chrysalis? Mm-hmm. We, we've seen that before, but over here, just by her own lonesome here, that's rare. And she's leading these hunters on a quest for the mythical Pegasus. And can we just talk about the panel that first introduces us to the concept of the Pegasus? Mm -hmm. It is marked off as a a butcherer would carve up a pig. (laughs) These are herbivores. Do you see a paradox? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. I find that very disturbing. You know, I've read, or I've, well, I've read a few fan fictions where Pegasi eat fish, and I do know on some records that um, some horses eat uh, meat, but that's only in very extreme cold weathers. But having them do this here is like, ugh. Yeah, just look at that. Of course, Pinkie Pie eats copious amounts of chocolate, which is actually very toxic for horses. I was going to say, it's like, technically horses could eat meat, it's just not good for them. Oh, yeah. But it's only in extreme cases where they have to. But they even have everything, like, lettered out. Like, they have the F on the N for flank. They have the W on the wings for wing. And then they have the B for belly. Like, they have it all cut out for it. <laughs> yeah. But I think that could be one of those situations where, hey, um, it's anatomy. They have real pigs. Like, you just... And they're going to cut it up just for experimentation? This is a pigasus for crying out loud. Well, while Nosy News is trying to carve a niche in the world, Mm -hmm. she also has a pretty impressively drawn photo. It's kind of like the Sasquatch, except clearer. 
I actually enjoy the cross hatching in the artwork. It's it stands out against the uh, more simplified pony designs. And who drew this again? Tony Fleece. Let's see here. Art by Tony Fleece. Got to hand it to him because this is interesting. The Tony Fleeks. It's very difficult to pronounce Fleeks. sometimes. <laughs> Forgive me, Mister Fleeks. Didn't Tony Fleece draw something for you at a con once before you were famous? Oh, but before. What do you mean before? <laughs> <laughs> Before season four started, oh, he he was kind enough to draw a silver quill from the from the neck up. Yay! And it, and it was delight, great delight. My first convention for the Brony Dumb Babs Con 2014. Ah, to which okay, I shall so it was somewhere when you were starting out. To which, at the time of this recording, I shall be returning. Yay! Ooh. Looking forward. I've to never that. been to a pony con. I think it's worth it to go to at least one. I'll be tackle hugging you over at BronyCon. <laughs> okay. But basically, it's actually kind of funny that several pages are just uh, nosy news talking about how, oh, I've attracted all these ponies to see this thing. And they're intruding upon Applejack and Fluttershy's vacation. No oh, peace and quiet. Then we get just a full page, which is pretty fun visually, of them trying to enjoy while all these other ponies, including... Cheerily and Pinkie Pie and Sweetie Belle are interrupting. And Derpy. 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 Where do you see Pinkie Pie and Sweetie Belle and Cheerily? The full page spread. Oh, I see it. I have to mention that Applejack wears clothes in one panel, which is cool. Begging your pardon, but we don't normally wear clothes. Yeah. (laughs) So, trying to spot rare birds. Actually, it's kind of funny. Sweetie Belle is looking through binoculars. We see a bird in the binoculars, and... Well, where's Rarity? That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> I mean, does she just walk off on her own with no one to watch her? This is during the time where uh, the CMCs has not gotten their cutie marks yet, so uh, this could be one of those cutie mark missions. Or she's yeah, counting on Pinkie Pie to uh, keep an eye on Sweetie Belle, in which case I question Rarity's choices. Or it's going to be another case where uh, Sweetie Belle just snuck off, like in a uh, From Whom the Sweetie Belle Toils... But either way, and and it is kind of funny. (laughs) Fluttershy is committing uh, arson on several more marshmallows. Oh, no. The poor girl does not have the uh, the ability. You guys know how you cook marshmallows? Inwardly, Mm. Fluttershy is like, Kill it with fire! (laughs) So we continue on, and here's where the things are losing energy. we got all this stuff going on, but it's all about this ruckus around these two characters. Nothing for the characters themselves. This is a situation where the characters are interacting with the situation, and the situation that they're given is not a good one. But at least when the two are trying to sleep, we finally get the conflict, the personal conflict for this uh, comic. Applejack says, you know I don't lie. I used to lie when I was a filly, but I stopped when I realized lies hurt. Even when they're small, even when you're trying to help, somebody always ends up hurt when you lie. That is the best southern accent I can do right now. I was going to say, it's like, you already sound like you could be a southern lawyer. Now, I'm just a humble lawyer from the south. (laughs) But I do declare. (laughs) I do declare it's harder the day than the business said on a corn cob pie. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh wow and knowing where Terra's from that's just good <laughs> thank you thank you I'll be here all week thank you uh, for once you got my references you like me you really like me <laughs> but l- l- let's just dissect this for a minute Applejack's assertion is a pretty big absolute all lies are bad even when they're trying to help because someone gets hurt now, I think we've seen in this show, telling the truth hurts also. So I'm not sure her assertion really works. There's a price to truth as well. Oh, yeah, true. I mean, the thing is with Applejack's realization here is that telling a lie hurts. It, yes, it does. But sometimes telling those white lies kind to protect one another does help. But in this situation here where Applejack it's well, Applejack's the element of honesty, and she has to be honest. And lying is not her strong point. But here's the thing I've often railed against the idea of defining a character by their power. Applejack's the element of honesty, but she they has one. It. 
Yeah, she she has one lied in the show, a uh, party of one. She is bad at it. But to say I am physically incapable of lying because I'm the element of honesty is it's reducing her thoughts and choices down to a default, oh, this is my power, ergo, this is all I can do. Well, probably she realized that when she told the lie to Pinky, then she hurt her feelings and, well, went to that mental breakdown. Well, there's also a leap of faith, Applejack's key episode, where Flim and Flam uh, sell the tonic and Applejack tells the lie, but she doesn't fight it to tell the truth, she just holds it in. But then she realized that what she was doing was bad and could cause Granny Smith to, well, perish into a leap of fate. Ah, uh, ah, uh, mm. see what he did there? Ah, uh, ah, uh, he said it! <laughs> yes. Oh god, Family Guy reference. <sighs> lying is not good. Lying is totally bad. But there's a time and a place. You know what, we're harping on this one a lot. Well, that's because it's the central focus for what's to follow. For the next morning, after Applejack does a classic Bugs Bunny, Long Yong, smack your mouth for whatever reason, she looks over and, lo and behold, there's a Pegasus. And it has my wings. <laughs> now anything can have alicorn wings. It, you don't even have to be a pony. You can have alicorn wings. M.A. Larson! Aha, it was me. I learned how voice. to animate those type of wings because I sold my soul to M.A. Larson. So I wouldn't tread on his, um, you know... Although, I gotta say this, the Pegasus is pretty adorable. Oh, yeah, true that. I mean, compare how it looks here to the uh, dicing charts we saw at the at the beginning of the comic. It's much more rounded, much more compact. I'd say Except it's a for pretty... that one panel where Fluttershy is holding him, it doesn't look that adorable. Mm-hmm. Really? Look, little stars in its eyes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah. Not really. Could you imagine putting something like that on the cutting block? I think not. Yes. I'm heartless. I'm adorable and get heartless. That. How can you be named Heart Song and be heartless? That means you're tone deaf. <laughs> oh. Yes, for some reason, someone thought I was caring, <laughs> but they were wrong. Well, I have to say that the two ponies outside hearing them scream was pretty interesting. Like, hmm, I wonder what they're doing. Yeah, that's oh. that's the thing. Like, do they not come check and be like, "Hey, what's going on in there?" No, they just like, no, "Okay, no. we'll just ignore it." No, <laughs> it's probably two ponies having an intimate moment. No, you, you should. Oh, just come go. on, Norman. <laughs> I had to go there. When the tents are rocking. But it's in the morning. Why would they do it in the morning? <laughs> morning Must wood. Resist urge <laughs> to comment. <laughs> Bite it. Bite it, Silver. <laughs> Family show. <laughs> yes, indeed. Family show. Silver, I thought you were in the dark side. Why don't you just say it? It's a very polite dark side. <laughs> Behold the door for a lady. Yeah. Behold the door for a lady before destroying their planet. <laughs> you give cookies? Every now and again. Yes. But only dark chocolate. Hey, dark chocolate is good. I like it. Ooh, I love dark chocolate. But anywho, do. carry on. Anywho. Anyway, Fluttershy, the naturalist within her, is saying, oh, we must protect this pig. We, if we, we can't move her, it'll disrupt her ecosystem. And uh, mm-hmm. Applejack's like, oh, great. Bats reference. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> Which, Bats was not, not a high point for either of them. Mm-hmm. But the song was pretty nice. Stop the bats, stop the bats, make them go and not come back. Okay, where's the shotgun? So anyway, but then we get, once again, just sort of ponies sitting and talking for a long time. And here's where our heroines are not showing their best intelligence. Fluttershy proposes that Twilight could declare the forest a nature preserve, because, you know, princess. And Applejack's mm. like, we can't leave the Pegasus, uh, the Pegasus alone. Okay, can we please count here? There are one, two ponies. And there is one... Pegasus have one pony, probably Fluttershy, keep an eye on the little scamp, while Applejack goes find their magical princess friend. Boom, comic over. Well, that's what they're doing in the next panel, as Applejack lies. But that's not what they're doing in the next panel. They're not going to get Twilight. They're going to... Panel. Page. 
they're going to lie and try and uh, tell them that it's gone. See, tell them why t- do that though? Why put more pressure? Why can't you just go tell Twilight and then she can go up on the stage and tell everyone to leave? That is true. Because none of them have unicorn magic to contact Twilight. No, it's it's not that too. Because okay, the <laughs> next pages, okay, like what Tara says does make does bring up a point where okay, two of them are discussing, and the most logical leap in reasoning here is for Applejack to go up on stage and say that the Pegasus, the Pegasus, is not there. It's not real. Which is a lie to itself because she's seen it. And instead of going up on stage, she could have gone to Ponyville. Uh, granted, we got no idea how far is Ponyville, but still. Mm. Either way, they're not, it's not the best use of their energy. And then Applejack gets up on stage trying to talk people down. And this is where it starts to get awkward. Uh, she's trying to encourage everyone to GTFO. Meanwhile, in one panel, we have an Indiana Jones pony. Hey! Basically, somehow this has become a faith argument. Just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. And it belongs in a museum. Indy, at this point, so do you. (laughs) Uh, Why does it have to be snakes? But I just like, okay, this is getting kind of uncomfortable. This is If this is meant to be commentary on belief... Or honesty, it's doing a pretty poor job. Yeah, I would say if you want to talk about beliefs, put on a dragon and a alicorn. Then you got something of an argument there. Which uh. you've got, you've got one that you can totally believe in because it's awesome, and one that sends fans into a rage. Uh, no, nah, because the dragon doesn't really care about the alicorn or the ponies of Equestria. They rather rob them and destroy them than uh, work with them. And you have Celestia and Luna raising the sun and moon. And saying that they help ponies, but you never see them do jack squat. Anyway, so Fluttershy, meanwhile, is watching from her tent, which is kind of creepy. (laughs) And she makes the comment that Applejack trying to lie is like a pig trying to fly, which the pig Pegasus takes offense at that. Anyway, Applejack is booed off the stage because this is apparently 4chan. (laughs) I love how that one pony just says heckle (laughs) instead of... (laughs) Like, I can understand, um, you know, people going, boo, but I've never seen someone just say the word heckle as a way to heckle someone. Hey, Sapphire. Heckle. <laughs> heckle, heckle, heckle. <laughs> heckle. Uh, Go to face heck- hug. Go to heckle. <laughs> uh, face <laughs> hugs you. Okay. No. If I'm going to hell, you're going down with me. You're not going to hell, you're going to heckle. <laughs> if I'm going to heckle, you're going down with me. Uh, but Anywho. <laughs> so the Pegasus tries to cheer Applejack up after she's pretty much failed to persuade anyone. And then there's a knock at the tent door. I want to repeat that. There's a knock at the tent door. Well, it could be the knock on the stump. And yet, uh, here's the, the best part. The best joke in the whole comic. It's nosy, says Applejack. Did she hear us? I don't know. How does she knock on the tent? I don't know! <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I think they're back. So that was that was at least one funny uh, joke with Applejack making a funny face directly below. Uh, that is a cute face for you Applejack lovers. Use it as a bookmark. It's really awesome. And then all of a sudden, Nosy is casting doubts that maybe Applejack has seen the Pegasus. And Applejack is about to... She's going to crack. She's going to actually blab to the group and put this poor creature in danger. Applejack, I'm starting to have severe doubts. And here's the thing, to be honest with you guys. If Applejack did not see the Pegasus at all, she could have told the truth about the whole situation where you guys are just crazy. There's no such thing as a Pegasus. But her seeing it and her mental state of, I must never tell a lie. I have been programmed that way. Thankfully, Fluttershy's on the scene as she whisks off in her sleeping bag, kind of looking like a pegasus, or at least drawing them all uh, to chase after it, including Lyra and Dr. Hooves, because they, I just see them. Hi. Okay. <laughs> but then... And they finally... And then they find out, oh, it's Fluttershy. Yeah, there's it's, no pegasus. That's just a cheap costume. 
And mm-hmm. basically, Nosy just blabs that she made up the whole Pegasus thing. This is pretty pitiful on a villain's part. It basically just... That's like a murder victim saying, ha, huh, you'll never find out that I did it. Uh-oh. Ah. I mean, like, we know that you're upset, Nosy, but, like, really, you're blabbing out about that it was fake? Hmm. I, Worst uh, villain ever. Worst second-tier villain ever. I won't say she's a villain at all. I think she's just an opportunist. You know what I mean. I don't even know if I can call her second-tier. She's in the nosebleed section. I, I think she's it's, in the same camp as Suri Pomomel. Pomomel? Pomomel? Oh, Polomare. Polomare, yeah. Suri Polomare. Seem camp there, and also lightning dust, and also who's the Wonderball X person who did bad? Oh, uh, Cloud Rider. Yeah, Cloud Rider. I thought it was Wind Wind Rider. Wind Rider, that's right. Yeah, same camp. It's that one. Yeah, same camp as those ponies. It's like pitiful vengeance kind of thing. Yeah. But mm. basically. How- once again, the villain just sabotaged themselves. She runs off. Applejack and Fluttershy defy physics. Absolute physics, as they all rest on a tree branch that supports two birds, two ponies, and a pigasus without snapping. Oh, and a banjo. <laughs> How is she playing a banjo? The same way she played an acoustic guitar in friggin' what is it, uh... Uh, I don't remember. No, 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 no. no. Was, it's the, the main, is it the main attraction? Yeah, the main attraction. Yes. The same way she played an acoustic guitar in the main attraction. Yeah, in America. Oh. In America. Yes, I might be we're winding things a bit here, but let's just, let's not forget about in the, the Indiana Jones pony saying that she belongs in a museum. <laughs> Which oh, actually wow. makes me kind of curious. Does that in mean America. that they're not t- trying to go dark here, but... Are they, does, is he saying that they should stuff her? Yes. Oh my. I don't know, that's what came to my head as soon as I saw that saying, she belongs in a museum. No idea. Oh my, oh my, my, my. They should put him I'm in sorry the... if I went, if I made things dark. No, Actually, no, it's cool. We love dark things. Mwahaha. Actually, I think she's because just Because I'm red and black, isn't it? <laughs> Probably. I, I think she's just, he's just recommending her to be a curator. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so the, our comic ends with everyone chasing after uh, Nosy News, mm-hmm. a rather forgettable villainess, mm-hmm. with, uh, but with the two friends able to just enjoy the tranquility of uh, nature and the far-off sounds of murder. <laughs> <laughs> the classic Looney Tunes beat em up dust cloud. And so... Man, we kind of plowed through this comic really quick, quick, quick. Yeah, it's not even, well, on record, it's about half an hour. So, yeah. Wow. It's straightforward and to the point. It's, it's pretty, not it's really cliched. much to talk about. It's cliched. You see stuff like this all the time. Mm, true that. And it's just forgettable. It's. I'm not saying that everything has to bring something new to the table, <sighs> but if you're going to do a trope, try to... Keep your readers somewhat engaged. Mm, that's also true. That's one of the things that Friendship is Magic is praised for. It takes old tropes and brings something new, or at least makes like them enjoyable. As it is, mostly this comic is just ponies sitting around and talking. Lots of talking. Talking is not bad, but <laughs> you have to put in substance to it. In truth, Applejack and Fluttershy each make one attempt at fixing the situation each. Mm-hmm. Applejack's speech and Fluttershy's flying in a sleeping bag. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's it. Nothing else. <laughs> oh, can we give props to Fluttershy for having the, the wing power and the ability to fly with such a restriction? Yeah. But honestly speaking, in terms of how this comic is, how this comic is being told, it's kind of how to put this? Is it me or is every My Little Pony story now could be easily solved with one logical reasoning? Pretty much. Half of them coming back to your friend is a princess. Yeah, didn't didn't Applejack like make that a point in like um the end of it when she had to reveal sort of the uh Pegasus? Like, you know, I'm friends with Twilight Sparkle. Did anyone catch on to that? 
this is abusing the power of friendship, but eh, we, we don't see it, so that means it doesn't happen. At least she well, didn't go off like Spike, where Spike just goes around saying, by order of the princess. Oh, God. That was abusing it for his own benefit. This would be basically invoking what Twilight's supposed to do, protect the land. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And really, the only thing of substance and discussion that I can see, other than the very poorly done reference to belief arguments is Applejack's assertion that when you lie, someone always gets hurt. And, well, okay, Nosy News is definitely going to get hurt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot. Oh, yeah. With funny sound effect in between. My Little Pony is aimed at a young audience. Mm -hmm. So it has to often uh, simplify the message, you know, cut it down to its, its core. But this is a case of oversimplification. It's where you paint things in such an absolute that it, it loses any application in the real world. At least it doesn't, like, um, insult the audience, at least. Mm. But I have to give it prop where it's needed. And in this comic here, we get to see Fluttershy and Applejack interact with each other a lot instead of what we got in previous comics with uh, Spike and Luna... Rarity and the cakes and so on. Well, that is true. They they do stick together throughout the whole comic. Mm -hmm. Although, unfortunately, it doesn't add anything new. We knew Applejack was very honest. We knew Fluttershy was very shy. But I don't see her sh being really shy in this one. Like Her shyness is not a factor in this comic. The only thing that Fluttershy contribute for this comic was her natural talent to talk with animals. Although funny enough, she doesn't uh, she doesn't talk with the pig much. Mm. Doesn't ask it questions. Actually, that's that, true. <laughs> I just had a realization. I mean, with I've often wondered: is Fluttershy the most powerful pony, with her ability to talk to animals, stare down monsters, and convert chaos spirits? Oh my god, she's the beastmaster. She yeah, is the she, best pony. If they really wanted to force the tourist ponies or the Pegasus catchers out, attack my animal friends! <laughs> fly, my pretties, fly! But this reminds me <laughs> of um, uh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure because there's a character where he's he can manipulate time and space, but he's an idiot. So that oh, pretty much. I no, no, no. Here's say. the thing. He can manipulate time and space, but he's an idiot, so he doesn't really use his powers to the fullest. So there's a balance there. Oh, well, there you mm. go. Well, yes, Fluttershy's natural shyness is pretty much the only check against her unrestrained power. Oh, just imagine if we have an episode dealing with Fluttershy and how she's just in... Wait, we got that one. Remember the Iron Wheel episode? I Oh, well, uh, I'd rather not. <laughs> you and James, you and James. Which episode? Oh, putting your hoof down. Yeah. Anything else we could say? It's time for closing thoughts on this cock. I don't think so, unless anyone pointed out something we missed. Well, yeah. I let's let's go in the in the circle, Norman. Hmm. Your final thoughts. Um, forgettable at best, but it had some interesting ideas. But with how Applejack is portrayed in this comic, it's she she's kind of wasted. And Fluttershy here, she's doing her best, but it seems that, I don't know, Fluttershy here, I wouldn't say she did wrong, but I wouldn't say she did good. As for Applejack, uh, the whole honesty and lying thing, uh, such a drag. The villain is not top tier, it's uh, annoyance at best. And, well, the lesson for this comic is... Never lie. Always tell the truth. Sapphire, what are your views? Do I really need to say anything? It was forgettable. There I got you... nothing. I got nothing. I... Alrighty, well, that's... that. Sometimes that's the biggest critique of all. And Torterra, what do you think of Yon Comic? I think it's kind of forgettable, too. Like, oh, yeah, you know, it's, an, it's a pig assist. They added something new, but... It, doesn't really help out of the comic and like it's so cliche that you've seen this stuff so many times like also too the like applejack like normal norman said she, she's just like just she just can't take all the the stress fair enough and i as i said i've already said 
they try to tackle the concept of honesty and the consequence of lying, but it's so oversimplified that it it can't be applied to real life. There are times where you have to insist on a little more moral gray. Otherwise, you're just an after-school special. <laughs> There's the topic of belief. These ponies were swindled into a false belief that actually was true. There was actually a Pegasus, but they never really contend with that. So it's not even the central focus. However, as with the Rainbow Dash Micro, I feel that this comic is a bridge. It could unite the world. All races, all creeds, all beliefs, they could all get behind the idea, this was kind of meh. Yes. It's been a while since we had that. Meh, 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 meh. But honestly speaking, <laughs> the Rainbow Dash Micro meh level was intense. This one, I didn't really think it was meh level. It was just, good job, you did well. Gold star. Yeah. It's true. The Rainbow Dash one was trying to be extreme with a great threat and all these, all these, uh, dangers to the pony race that Rainbow has to stop. Mm -hmm. And this one, there's a pig that may or may not end up on the cutting block because they've already mapped it out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I had him for breakfast, remember? I... They already cut him up. You murderer. Murderers! How do you think I get my alicorn wings? Ha uh ha. -huh. Uh... Just get some eggs and bacon, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, Silver, what's next week's episode going to be? Next week review, we shall return to the TV show, Mitt on Your Marks, the first Cutie Mark Crusaders post actually getting their Cutie Marks. Yeah, I can't wait for Sunset, sorry, I can't wait for Starlight Glimmer to be involved and telling the CMC's Cutie Marks don't really matter. And I just can't wait to make a Studio Ghibli reference. And I look forward to making fun of how everyone is just staring at their rumps. <laughs> uh, and, look at my butt. And, look at my butt. Especially with that other, that one no new matter. pony. No can matter. <laughs> yes, the new pony who's who's flashing passersby. Oh, God. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> at least he's not wearing a trench coat. <laughs> but the look he gives, though, he's like, hey, look, look, look at it. Isn't it beautiful? Uh, a show for kids. It's terrifying. The family show. <laughs> Alrighty, but in the meantime, I think we've we've spent more time on this comic than many would. This just shows we're dedicated hardcore, yo. So for the MBS show, I am Silver Quill, and I am Norman Sanzo. I am Sapphire Hot Song. I am Toy Terror One Three Two Four. And we're saying adios. See ya. Bye bye. Goodbye. In stereo. Oh no. You <laughs> There's the music. There it is.